Hi Cynthia, it's Ian from Spatial Modeling Solutions. I just wanted to, to show you something something quickly with regards to the, the QGIS applications and uh, and then also that super cross table that I was telling you about about the, the census data and how you can link it back to, to QGIS. So I'm just gonna open a, a quick version or a version of, of QGIS. Uh, I'm doing that now. Okay, let's just minimize this a bit to be a similar screen size to my little capturing window. I'm going to minimize that. Then I want to open up the Supercross stuff. Now this is the Stats SA data. Uh, okay, it doesn't want doesn't want to allow me. Okay, hang on, let's just make this the size of our window so we can see it. Okay, so now what we do with this is we create a new project that will link back to our spatial information in QGIS. So these are this comes in the form of three disks, which which I've got and I can give to you guys. But you just need to uh, create a a query to then link back to a spatial data set. So I'm going to use the descriptive um, database. I'll say OK. OK, hang on a sec. It's just taking a bit of a, a while to open up here. It doesn't seem to. Oh, there we go. OK, so now the first thing I need to do is define the geography. For for the for the query, so I'm going to recode my geography, and it's in the Western Cape, city of Cape Town, and then so these are subplaces um, that have had census data uh, captured for them, and I'm looking for Cape Town. I'm going to use the Cape Town one, but I don't need the names. I actually need the codes. So I'm going to tell it I want to use the codes, and we use all the sub items, and I add it to this window. So now that is the geography defined. So I say OK. I then drag this across into our table. Now I just need to ask it, OK, those are the, the spatial components. What am I asking it to do? So I'll just do a simple query for the population group. I'm going to select all of these and add them all together. OK, Cindy. I'm going to add a total. Let's add the total. I'll say OK. And then I can drag that into our query. I'll put that on the top the top bar and then all I need to do is say go and it runs the query for us and now the this information will be um, converted into an Excel and then uh, pulled into our um, QGIS and linked back to a, a spatial layer called the the subplace layer so let's go ahead and do that now so what I did quickly there is uh, just export it to an Excel spreadsheet now I'm just going to go and find that new layer, ah, that um, that spreadsheet, sorry, and it's on this drive under this folder. Okay, so here it is here. Okay, so now that's the Supercross query we've just done, but it's been converted into a spreadsheet. So I just need to do some fiddling here. I update this. I give this a, an SPID name. And there's also some information at the bottom here. This this stuff also is not necessary, so I delete that. And I'm just running through this very quickly. I mean, obviously, this is just to give you an idea of what can be done. There's just something else I need to do. I'm just replacing the uh, little values here with zeros. So replace all. Okay, close. Now I can save this as a XLS, but then. As I import it into QGIS, I need to save it as something else. I need to save it as a, uh, a common delimited file. So I'm just going to call it group.csv. Yes. And now we can close this. So now I can pull that into QGIS and, uh, and link it to a, a spatial layer. So let's do that next. All right, so we're going to do that in QGIS. So I've opened a completely blank uh, project here. Um, on purpose, just to show you um, what it takes to add new layers. So, add new layer buttons, and obviously we'd go through this in greater detail in the tutorials. Uh, but like I said again, this is just a, a quick example to show you what's possible. So I need to browse on my database for the the, the layers which are of interest to me. I'll make this smaller so you can still see what I'm doing. Okay, these are all the different file formats. Which can be opened. I'm looking for a shape file. So if we open the provincial, there we go. And we're going to be working down here in this area. And we want to add the subplaces because we're going to attach to the subplaces. So that is in this folder. Yeah. OK. 
to 1. And it's for the whole country. We don't need the country, so I'm just going to quickly isolate the, the area that we're interested in. So I'll just open the properties for a layer. And uh, a general tab. Oh, this is a bit small for my view. I'm just going to make that bigger. And this is something called a query builder where you can tell the, the program you only want to add um, properties or features that have a certain value. So we're going to say uh, municipal name equals, and it's going to be city of Cape Town. So if we go find, I've gone past the C, so city of, city of Cape Town. And say OK. And that's created a, a definition. So now it's only the city of Cape Town there. So if we select that and say zoom to layer, it'll just zoom to the city of Cape Town. And in particular, we're going to be working in this area here. So another thing you can do, um, you would obviously this would require you to have your own database and a whole bunch of layers on your system. But the nice thing about QGIS is you can also access layers off the internet. So you can stream in raster layers. So we're going to do that using a layer called OpenStreetMap. So we're going to stream this in. And it will depend on also on your connection. There we go, that's nice and quick. I'll just drag this, drag this little subplace layer. Okay, maybe I'll just put this one there. So it draws in the order that it appears in your table of contents here. So I'm just going to change the values here, or the, the coloring, so that it doesn't have a fill. So I'm going to say no brush. Okay, so now it's just dropped that blue fill, and it's just the outline boundaries that are labeled, I mean, that are, that are being symbolized. And another thing we can do is just label quickly. So if we select our little labeling tool, we're going to label, and we do want to label. And this is the feature we want to label on subplate name. And we want to draw a little buffer. And you see it starts, starts updating um, the layer as you go. We can say apply. Close that. Okay, so now each of these subplate layers have a name and a code. Uh, and these are the names for them. So now we can zoom in a bit closer just to give you a better idea. And then we're going to attach the, the data which we exported and saved as an Excel to this to this new layer. All right, so the first thing we have to do is add that Excel or that um, CSV which we created. Uh, I'm just going to navigate back to that quickly. Open this folder. There's a CSV. Where are you? Over here. There we go, group CSV. And say OK. And open. All right, so it's added to our table of contents. If we just quickly have a look at it by opening the attribute table. Uh, just minimize this slightly. There we go. This is the, the data which has been pulled through. So it was an Excel which we edited, converted to a, a CSV, and now we can pull that through and attach it or link it. Um, so we're going to link using uh, this SPID. It's a unique identifier, which will correlate to a unique identifier within the spatial layer. So we need to say properties, and we go down to joins. We're going to create a new join. And we're joining the group, so that's the CSV we just added. We're going to use that SPID and the same code in the spatial layer. We say OK. It's happy with that connection. We say OK. And now we can just test that connection using this identify tool. We'll just click on any one of these little points here. Where should we go? Let's just click on Camps Bay. OK, so here's our new data. So this stuff is from the group. Um, spreadsheet which you've added or the CSV and then it shows you exactly what's happening. So that total is a total population and then this is a group population for that area. Okay, so that's that li has linked through nicely. So now what you can do is you can do other sorts of, of queries based on that. For instance, you can uh, create a selection query. You can select by an expression and we want to find out, let's say for instance, uh, um, areas or subplaces where the population is greater than 2000. 2000. We'll select. Okay, so now the layers uh, or the, or the, the uh, features which have a population greater than 2000 are all colored up in yellow. So you can do all sorts of things. You can then go and create a population density um, and just start using this data to, to, enrich, to enrich your, um, your queries. And so that's why it's, it's, it's great that. Uh, sensors have have provided this these these disks for us, but then also um, 
being able to link it through through QGIS through through doing table joins and that sort of thing. So that's just a, a brief, very quick example of, of what can be done in QGIS and the Supercast data. So uh, I hope it gives you a better idea of, of the usefulness of this and can help you motivate um, to whoever may be it may be that uh, this might be a valuable tool for you guys going forwards. Okay, thanks Cynthia. Take it easy. Cheers.